<laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Bet Online. It remains your number one spot for NBA, MLB, MMA, boxing. It doesn't matter. Every single prop, every single play, every single point, it's all at Bet Online. When it comes to bets, when it comes to props, everything that you need is at your headquarters for sports betting. That's Bet Online. Head to the website right now, use your mobile device, sign up, get a 50, that's 50% welcome bonus. Don't forget to use the promo code. B L E A V, that's believe, to get yourself a 50% welcome bonus. Come on, there's no need to hesitate. Bet online where the game starts. I hope you're ready to have your mind blown with the greatest health and fitness information on the planet. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, welcome to the Mikey Likes You podcast, the greatest health and fitness podcast in the world, as decided by me. Okay. <laughs> feel like I'm a pretty important vote, and uh, I've always heard about how important self-confidence is. So, first things first, thank you to Bet Online for making this show a possibility. Secondly, the greatest health and fitness nutritional supplements in the world. I stand behind that. That's not a joke. That's not hyperbole. The absolute most accountable, high quality products on earth are made by First Detachment. And they only make things that actually apply and are useful. You're not going to waste your money on a bunch of stuff that's dressed up to seem like it's working. It actually is beneficial to your performance and to your health. It can help you achieve your goals. There is no use for any nutritional supplement if your diet and your training is not set in stone and is not tuned to be effective for your goal. But once the training and the nutrition is tuned to be optimal for your goals, there are a handful of things that can take you to the next level, like peri-workout nutrition, like lipolytic agents, like uh, things to, t to care for your internal organs, which get taxed in an amplified way when you're engaging in heavy resistance training, okay? So why not go to First Attachment and use the code MIKE10, there'll be a link in the show notes below, and get your hands on field rations, the go pills, QRF, uh, and hit the rack, which is their new and improved sleep supplement. We've already talked about how crucial good sleep is, and it is chock full of amazing ingredients that will help you sleep deeper and with higher quality. All right, so again, thank you so much. First attachment, best in the business. Now, thank you to all my patrons, especially you at the top tier. I have to tell you a very nice little anecdote about my top tier patrons. One of them, Mark, I don't wanna use his last name just in case he doesn't wanna be talked about. He's a great dude. He's already in good shape and he wanted to just turn it up a notch. Okay, he happens to live in the Austin area like myself. He came out on Saturday to train at Gracie Humaita Cedar Park, uh, even though he lives closer to like the Austin, um, the Austin Academy. But he came out to my neck of the woods to see me get promoted to Purple Belt on Saturday, which was really nice of him. And a bunch of other people came out kind of specifically for that. And it really... I can't explain to you, man. It meant so much to me as an adult, as a grown man, to have people kind of spend, carve out time out of their day with families and business and jobs of their own. It, it, it meant so much. But after that, he said hello and he congratulated me and it meant a lot to me. And we got to kind of talk shop a little bit. And then he beat the fuck out of me. He beat the fuck out of me. He's a black belt and he's been a black belt for a while. And he's a black belt under like really well regarded people. And he beat the fuck out of me. Like moments after I got promoted to purple belt and I'm feeling good and I'm feeling like this new level of achievement and ability. And he fucking passed my guard and smashed me. And then I got in his guard and he triangled the shit out of me. Like really, it was bad. So thank you, Mark. Um, but the reason I wanted to bring up my Patreon so early on in the show is because this whole show is gonna be based around an article, a training program, a protocol I just posted on my Patreon 
as of now, it is the only place to get it. And I'm gonna talk about all the nuts and bolts of sprints, squats, steak. Sprints, squats, steak. It is a three-pronged protocol and I've been working on it. I've been using it myself since the beginning of 2023 and I really believe in it, okay? Is this the best program for you if you want to have numbers through the roof when it comes to strength? No. Is this the best protocol for you if you want to grow giant muscle mass, extreme hypertrophy? Absolutely not. Is this the best program for you if you want to change your life in a positive direction, shed body fat, harden up, and just move better, perform better in every facet of your day? and shed body fat and get leaner and have a higher power to weight ratio, this is absolutely the best program I can think of. And I mean that. I encourage you, if you think like, hey, Mike, you're just saying that because you wanna get people to go to your Patreon and, 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 and sign up and blah, 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 maybe. But I also, I, I put my money where my mouth is. If you can follow this protocol, which I made increasingly more simple, I simplified it down and gave it, you know, myself as the lab rat, I used it and I saw these results because I took away decision fatigue. There's so many less details than most training programs and eating programs and protocols that uh, I think that there's that benefit because as I've always said, when things stop adding up in your life, you gotta start subtracting. And there's a real, real value to minimalism. Squats and sprints are the two most transformative things you can do for your performance and for your physique. Your hormones go crazy in a positive direction. Your ability to move more fluidly with more expression, speed, and power go through the roof. You have to obtain a lower level of body fat and a higher level of muscle mass in order to achieve either of these kind of pinnacles of human performance and to, to, to do them well and to continue to do them well. There's deload weeks programmed. Weeks four and eight are deload weeks. So weeks one through three are kind of one protocol. Weeks five through seven are another protocol where you step it up a little bit and then you deload again and you can restart. I'm going to break it down and start with sprints, go to squats, and then go to the steak. And it's really just the conditioning, the strength, and the nutrition. And that's it. It's a three-pronged deal. I encourage you, go to my Patreon, check it out. It is the top post right there. And I'm going to start breaking it down for you so that if you are interested, you can try this out and have even more details into how to make it work for you. Okay. And then also, if you're kind of on the fence, just listen to this podcast. And also you'll get, even if you're not interested at all, you'll get some background as to why these things seem to work so extremely well. Okay, so let's start off with the sprint protocol. Most people do not sprint, yet most people should. It is the highest form of human performance there is. It is the highest performance, it's the highest level of expression of human movement to run as absolutely fast as you can and put extreme force into the ground over and over again to try to reach maximal speed and maximal acceleration. It is the highest expression of human performance right there with the, you know, the leap, the vertical jump or the broad jump. It is the most power and most force you could drive into the ground and express with the triple extension, meaning your, your ankles, your knees, and your hips. And there is nothing negative about sprinting. All it does is amazing things for you. And the harder you work to get better at sprinting, the longer you're going to have a well-functioning body. Because it's impossible to sprint and continue sprinting if you're overweight. It's impossible to sprint and continue sprinting if you have major dysfunction within the body. And everything you do in life will be improved if you can consistently and constantly sprint and, and continue doing it. Now, because it is so transformative, because it is so impactful, because it is the highest expression of human performance, it also 
destroys your body, meaning that your central nervous system and your musculoskeletal system really takes a beating. That is why you have to keep your ego in check. More is not better. Just because this is excellent for your body does not mean that you should do more of it to make it more excellent for your body. Quite the contrary. Sprinting is exactly like maximal effort when you're talking about resistance training, lifting heavy weights for low reps. It is not something that you can do very frequently. And when you do do it, you have to really keep the amount under control. The volume has to be very well regulated because there's no choice but to make the intensity through the roof. All right, there will be three different sprint days programmed into each week. The first day is day one speed work. This is going to be six sprints broken down into different lengths, but very, very short, 30 meters, 60 meters, things like that. Okay, and you're going to be doing these at 90% plus of your ability to run. That means you are going balls to the wall for these six times. Now, normally, if you're going to try to increase your sprinting ability, if you're working on performance, a high level sprinter trying to get faster at sprinting, if that is your number one goal, you're gonna take maximum amounts of rest in between each sprint. Okay, that is not necessarily the main goal of this program. The main goal of this program is conditioning and of course fat loss. So you are going to rest a very short amount. This is not for you to be a competitive sprinter. If you want to be a competitive sprinter, you would do a program very similar to this, but you would be taking five, eight minutes rest between sprints. Okay. It is simply impossible to keep hitting your maximum speed if you're only resting 30 seconds or so in between your sprints. But if you wanted to keep, you know, just pushing the envelope with your metabolic function and your hormones and get yourself geeked and become a muscle car, this is what you want to do. You're going to go do these short sprints, explode as hard as you can, 90% plus of your maximum ability. And then the only rest you take is that walk back to the starting line. Okay. The actual protocol itself is there. Like I said, there is weeks one through three, which is going to be one protocol. And then there's going to be weeks five and seven with the deload weeks programmed at weeks four and eight. All right. So you have day one, which is going to typically be Monday, start of your week. And that is your speed work. Then there is day two of your sprint work, which is going to be speed endurance. Now these are not long distances, but they are longer than your speed work. You can't hold and maintain 90 plus percent for this entire time. These are going to be in your 80 to 150 meters. Okay. Um, you are going to go fast, but when you get engaged in speed endurance work, you're going 85, you know, 80%, you're going as fast as you can for this duration, but even world-class sprinters can't hold maximal velocity for this distance. But what you do get is a different level of conditioning. This wrecks your lungs. You are going to be breathing very hard. You are going to be feeling lightheaded. And that's a great thing. Again, keep that rest interval as short as possible, really truncated rest. We are not looking to become world-class sprinters. We are looking to become better metabolic machines. Okay. And you will absolutely retain, maybe even increase a little bit of muscle mass and you will be shedding body fat if you can uh, adhere to a sustainable, good diet and, and continue with this sprint protocol. It's, it's a guarantee. Okay. So you have the really short ones on day one, which you're going balls to the wall. This is like your one rep max. You're just really pushing it. Day two is going to be more in that hypertrophy rep range type thing, a six to eight rep range, but this is for sprints. So you're going to be going a little bit longer distances, a little bit slower, but keeping the rest. Then the final sprint workout of the week is day three, which is going to come on the tail end of your lifting. You can actually do this on a treadmill. That's why I did combine the two. I don't want you in the gym as many days as possible. I want to kind of keep it compact. So there's going to be five total days of training when it comes to this protocol, three days of lifting, three days of sprinting with the final day of lifting and sprinting being combined into one workout. Okay. So it's five total days. Your third day when it comes to sprinting is going to be your tempo runs, your tempo training. Now what this is, is much longer. This you absolutely can't sprint. And because we're talking about distances like 200 meters, 400 meters, which would be one full lap around a track, you're going nowhere near maximum speed. You're going at a good clip that you can maintain for the entirety of that interval. Now, because you are doing kind of lower levels of intensity, 
in order to achieve this longer distance. This does not beat you up anywhere near as much, which is another reason why I combined it with lifting. All other sprint workouts, sprint workout one and sprint workout two, which are your speed and speed endurance, those must be, must be separated from your lifting. Don't ask again. Don't say, well, what if I do it right after I lift? No, you're going to harm yourself. You are going to compromise your success. You're going to compromise your results. If you absolutely must, because you have a busy schedule, combine the two in the same day, they must be separated by at least five hours. Okay. So day one, speed workout, day two, speed endurance, and then day three, your longer runs at a slower pace, which is your tempo runs. Okay. And it's all in the program right there for you at my Patreon. Again, link in the profile. Now, when it comes to lifting, there's going to be three days of lifting as well. Day one of lifting is going to be a full body workout that obviously kicks off with squats because we have sprints, squats, and steak. The back squat. This is going to be done for 12 reps, 10 reps, 8 reps, and 6 reps. Four sets total, superset with another exercise. The back squat here is really done for higher reps and a little bit more of hypertrophy. You're not going to be going extreme amounts of weight, but you're going to be going at a good enough uh, kind of weight that by the time especially you reach um, your six rep, which is your final set, your top set, you're going to be looking at about 85, 80 to 85% of your one rep max. Okay. 50% max for 12, 60 for, you know, your 10, uh, 70 to 75 for your eight. And then your top set can be 80 to 85. Okay. Every single exercise in your lifting is going to be superset with another exercise. And, uh, it's all right there for you at the Patreon site. Okay. Now there's going to be day two of lifting, which also starts off with the back squat. We're talking about squat, squat, squat. Okay. This is for big weight, six sets of one rep. All sets must be 90% plus of your one rep maximum. There is no need to fool around here. We're not working on, you know, working on getting into different rep ranges or energy systems. No, load that bar up after your warm up sets, you get to 90% plus of your one rep max and you hit it for that same weight, all six reps, good amounts of rest, at least two minutes between sets. And again, everything is going to be superset with something antagonistic that works well with that exercise. So that is going to be day two. There's also other exercises beside the squat. I just want to give you some, up, uh, some insight into how this works. Day three, which is go going to be combined with your tempo runs, that has the goblet squat. You're going to give your spine and you're going to give your lower back and you're going to give your hips and you're going to give your central nervous system a little bit of a break. But I still want you working that squat movement pattern because it is so beneficial. Goblet squat is going to be for a lot higher reps. It's going to be a lot lighter weight, but it also helps you squat back squat better. It also helps you give you mobility in your hips, in your knees. Okay. So things start off with the goblet squat on day three, which is again, going to be combined with your tempo runs. Okay. So it gives you five total days of training. This is a very, very good training program that I thought really thought about. And I really put a lot of effort into making it comprehensive so that it's going to improve your mobility. It's going to improve your strength, your power, and your just movement quality and quality of life. You will feel better. You will feel better doing this. Your hormones are going to go up. You're going to get mental clarity because this is tough. There is a mental challenge to this, especially when you're talking about like the speed endurance stuff. It sucks. It's brutal. It's brutal. And you're pushing your body, you're redlining your body, which is a great thing. Obviously there's the physical benefits, but there's the mental psychological benefits too. Okay. It, there really is. And we don't engage in a lot of stuff like this in our lives where we're really kind of exploring that, that high level of discomfort and doing it voluntarily and then coming back for more. All right. So we talked about sprints. We talked about squats. Let's talk about steak. Steak is going to be just the term that I kind of used to talk about the overall nutrition protocol for this. Now it's very simple. I don't have you counting calories. I don't have you counting macros. What I want you to do is eat two meals a day. If it has to be three, but three at the most. Okay. We are working on hormones here. We are going to separate meals. We're going to really space it out. We're going to have two larger feedings, maybe three. Um, and it's going to help your leptin and it's going to help your blood sugar. It's going to get you back in the game. Okay. Two meals a day, three meals at most. If you things get haywire, 
One of those meals every day has to be steak. Now, I understand, look, you, you're not gonna go out and buy top level filet mignon and ribeye, but you can get flank steak, you can get outside skirt steak, you can get uh, short rib. There's myriad different ways you can get steak and make it affordable, especially if you buy in bulk, okay? And also if uh, palate becomes a problem, um, and money becomes a problem, just you can sub in ground beef or ground bison. It doesn't have to be red meat, um, beef, it could be bison, any red meat, lamb. So one meal every day, it could be all of them, but one meal at least every single day has to be steak, okay? The only carb source you are allowed for this entirety, for all eight weeks, is going to be fruit, okay? I'm not saying this is always the best, white rice is great, potatoes are great, I'm saying for now, you're only allowed carb source is fruit outside of red meat or your steak you have certain options when it comes to protein sources whole eggs raw dairy and bone broth okay you can add in fatty fish too if that's your thing if you like salmon and and you know fattier fish that's fine you can add that in too but at least once a day you could be every meal but one meal has to be comprised of steak or ground beef ground bison red meat okay uh, all other protein sources must be whole eggs, bone broth, raw dairy, or fatty fish. Okay? The only carb source you are allowed is fruit, and that's it. Eat as much or as little as you like, and only two servings a day. And, and at those two servings, go hog wild. Don't worry about it. Okay? I think this is super simple. It's not going to be a great diet for Mr. Olympia. It's not gonna be a great diet for you know extreme hyper, but it absolutely is a great diet for, if you're watching this and you're like, I need something to kick me in the ass, and in eight weeks I will look and feel better, I guarantee this will work. Give it a shot. I will reiterate, two meals a day, preferably, but three meals is acceptable. No more than that. No snacking in between, only eating at those feedings, spread them out at least five, six hours apart. One of those meals has to be steak, steak-based. There must be a large serving of protein at all meals, but one meal every day has to be steak, or you can replace it with ground beef if, pricing, if money or your palate starts to get crazy, all right? Now, all other protein sources outside of that steak meal must be either whole eggs, bone broth, raw dairy, fatty fish, or some combination of everything that I just mentioned. The only carb source you are allowed is fruit, any fruit you like, as much as you like. And that's that. If you can maintain that for all eight weeks with some breaks, not only are you gonna take a break um, from training on weeks four and eight, you can take some breaks with uh, your diet. It's really hard to reintroduce that lifestyle back in though if you go hog wild on the deload weeks, okay? Especially considering you're not gonna be training as much and that's when your body is supposed to be kind of getting that second wind, allowing it to recover. I wouldn't wanna go out and eat pizza every day, but you are allowed to kind of have some relaxation as the Brazilians say, okay? So that's that. Three days of sprinting, three days of weight training, the third day of both is combined, so it's five total days of training throughout the week. You are going to eat two meals a day, as much steak as you like. At least one meal of the day has to be steak, and you can only have fruit as carb sources. And all protein that is outside of your steak, your mandatory one a day steak, is going to be either bone broth, whole eggs, fatty fish, or raw dairy. And that's that. Everything I talked about is all broken down in greater detail and it's there for you to read and hold in your hand if this is something that you're interested in. But you have to join my Patreon and the link is in the profile, okay? It's open to all tiers. You don't have to join at the top tier. But if you're interested in that, if you'd really like some extra help and if this program isn't exactly right for you, what you're looking for right now, maybe you're a beginner. This is not something that an abject beginner should be doing. Maybe you're a competitive athlete. This is not something a competitive athlete should be doing. But if there's other reasons why you may need more help, go ahead, feel free, join my top tier. I love adding new clients and I really feel 
like such a connection with doing it. Also, the middle tier gives you uh, all the training programs and nutritional information for you right there. The bottom tier just gives you access to a lot of different fun stuff, especially just stuff I like to write about, stuff I like to update people about when it comes to different studies that I've come up with and also my rants and everything about habit forming and whatnot. And that's all there at my Patreon. Once again, check out First Attachment if you are in need of the best supplements on the nutritional supplements there are the best in the business uh first attachment link in my profile in the show notes below but you could also just use my code mike 10 the number 10 once again thank you so much to bet online and remember in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares i do be good squats sprints steak blah.